now we will be going to one of the newest Mets, um, Kyle Dowdy. Um, thank you for joining the show, Kyle. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, hey, Kyle. Uh, so this is Jake. I just wanted to say congratulations on being a part of this organization. We welcome you to New York. Uh, so what are you most excited about um, specifically joining the Mets organization? Um, I, I really appreciate the warm welcome. Um, thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, I think most excited about just uh, kind of getting to work and being with the contender. It's it's fun to see a pitching staff and a team like this. We're obviously making a lot of moves right now to uh, you know try and win a World Series this year, which is exciting. Um, Kyle, uh, thank you so much for coming on to our podcast. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, my question, you know, obviously the Mets do see you as a um, steal from other organizations. You have a live arm. Um, and I'm sure you've had uh, conversations with Brody uh, about uh, many different things. What have they been like so far, these conversations with Brody Van Wagen? Um, really, we're just kind of trying to focus on uh, being ready, showing up for spring training, and what, whatever role the organization sees fit for me, I just want to perform that role to the best of my ability, you know, whether it's you know, a, a long inning guy, a late inning guy, whatever they want me to do, um, to, to fill that role for them. Yeah. So obviously there, there's a lot of different places that you could fill into and that that's something the Mets have obviously been investing in this off season. So guys that could fill many roles. Um, so next year you obviously have a role on the 25 man roster due to the, uh, rule five draft rules is there anything this year that you are doing a little bit differently um in preparation to to make such a big step uh not really my my preparation's pretty much been the same all off season um i had really clear cut goals i wanted to accomplish this off season um i think they're all being accomplished currently um i set out a goal that you know at the end of last season i wanted to train my body in a way that i could throw 200 innings next year uh, and you know if 200 innings happens if they use me in a starting role for some reason um that's awesome if they want to use me in a bullpen role and i throw 40 innings that's awesome however i could help the ball club is really what i want to do and how i want to contribute now i know that um the mets have said that they um, plan to utilize you as a reliever, but um, you know, you, you just pointed out how it, it could be, it could come to a point where maybe they could utilize you as a starter if need be. Um, what is the difference in preparation when uh, between pre- preparing for a game as a starting pitcher or preparing as a relief pitcher? Uh, it, it's kind of crazy you bring this up because, you know, for my entire pro career, I've been, hey, you're going you're gonna to start the season in the bullpen. And then, you know, a couple weeks in, all of a sudden I'm in the rotation and stick in the rotation. So I've got to experience both, which is awesome. I mean, it gives me a lot of insight kind of into how I want to approach going into a, a relief role. Um, Preparation-wise, I think you taper down your throwing program early in the day to just get loose, make sure your body feels good. And then as, you know, first, second, third innings go on, make sure you get up, moving around, depending on what role you're in. Obviously, you know, a guy like me is going to be in a different role than a guy like Diaz, where Diaz knows he's probably going to be up in the fifth or sixth to get loose for the ninth. Um, But for me, I'm really locked in, you know, early in the game in case they need me to come in that situation. Um, but yeah, just utilizing weighted balls, uh, mobility routines, things like that to keep the body moving. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that sounds like a good regimen that obviously will, will help, help us win games. So I, I like to hear it. Um, so I, I know from uh, reading up about you a little bit that you have four pitches that you throw. Um, I'm just curious, out of your four pitches, your four pitch selection, wh- which one do you feel like you can re- uh, rely on the most, and why do you think that is? You know, it's kind of crazy how everything's changed in like the last year. Because early on, I would have told you, oh, change up, no doubt. But with the influx of VLO, um, you know, a lot better touch to my slider, cutter, whatever you want to call it. I don't know that there is one standout pitch 
I think to left-hand hitters, if I'm going to use a pitch to get outs, it's probably going to be a changeup. If I'm getting outs against a righty, I can go a myriad of ways. Um, and it's really one of those that I try not to eliminate any pitch in a circumstance and want to have feel day in, day out to throw any of those pitches in any count. All right. Um, is there a pitch that you have that you – uh, might not have had confidence in as much as you do now, like like if you had confidence in it, less confidence in it um, before, now you have more confidence in it. Is there any pitch that you have that um, matches that description? Uh, absolutely. My, my cutter, slider, whatever you want to call it, it went from almost being eliminated from my arsenal altogether um, at the beginning of last season. I uh, just wasn't getting good results on it. I was tinkering because I originally had it as a slider, kind of tinkering, trying to make it a cutter, and it just wasn't very good. And then I got to the Indians, and we made a couple little tweaks to it, grip changes. And then I think the added velo also helped because it, it wound up being a really successful pitch for me. It ranged anywhere from 86 to 92, um, depending on, you know, profile and shape. But I think that was one of those pitches that it went from being a minus pitch to – Average, maybe plus. I mean, that's up to scouts to decide, obviously. Okay, well, congratulations on on succeeding with that pitch. I'm, I'm happy that uh, you're more confident in it. Um, but let's move on a little bit. Uh, I'm curious, so this year going to the, to the Mets clubhouse, who are you most excited to meet in this upcoming spring? Is there anyone you've already met um, that you just want to shout out? Uh, it's really ironic. Actually, Drew Smith and I were in the same draft class as the Tigers, so we've played together for a little bit. We're pretty close. Um, I've played against Zamora and Bachelor quite a bit, so that's exciting. I uh, met them both when we were at the uh, high-A All-Star game together. And then, obviously, I just want to pick the minds of, you know, DeGrom, Syndergaard, Wheeler, Matt, all these just absolute studs, you know, Familia Diaz, whoever it may be, just take little things away from each of them. Yeah, that'll, that'll be awesome, honestly. Um, so I want to know, um, what do you like to do in your spare time other than baseball? <laughs> honestly, I'm going to sound like a total nerd, but I love reading research on baseball. Um, other than that, uh, I'm a big dog lover, and my wife is an even bigger dog lover, so we foster animals a lot in the off season, which is fun. Um, just really anything to uh, keep us moving and keep our minds working. So, yeah. Uh, and for uh, some reason, I, 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 for some reason, I thought you were going to say reading for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I also just want to thank you for fostering animals. Cause I, I have a lot of family members who also foster animals and it's a, it's a rough job. It's something that you take a lot of your time out to do. And I, I just appreciate it hearing that uh, you take your time to you know, do that. I, I can't take any credit for it. That's definitely my wife's doing. Um, she she pushed for it, and I'm all in on it now. But it's one of those I could definitely see her um, when we're up in New York doing something with a shelter up there because it's really just where her heart is. That's awesome. Uh, spe- speaking of coming up to New York, so – uh, I also read a little bit more about you, and uh, I saw that you were born and grew up on the West Coast. So what, what are you excited about coming to the East Coast and probably living in New York City? I mean, that that must be a, a huge change and something you're very excited about. Tremendous change, for sure. The big city. Um, the really ironic part is that, like, two weeks before the Rule 5 draft, my wife was like, hey, like, I've been wanting to take a trip to New York. Can we go to New York? So we took a little, like, three-day trip up there. And I'd never seen the city, and she's been a few times and absolutely loves it. She's like, oh, can't you just imagine playing in this atmosphere, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, of course, she has a cousin who lives up there, and he's like, man, it's awesome. Like, there's a lot of fan base. Everybody loves baseball up here. And so it was kind of crazy that that all happened really quickly. So I'm excited. I know there's a lot of passion up there in the fan base. I know people are pretty diehard. So it's, it's fun to, to get to that. All right, so I have just a few quick, short questions for you. 
just to end it off, uh, the